proven the exception to the rule that uh, those that uh, can't do teach. Um, possibly the best guitarist in the Northwest. I don't know, I like to see a list there, don't want to embarrass the guy, but possibly, possibly, certainly the most humblest. But the most surprising thing for me is that when I first met this first guest, his, his voice is a lot deeper than I thought it would be. Um, I, I, th I don't know why I thought it would be higher, because I've never really heard the guy speak, I've only ever seen the YouTube videos that a lot of you just would have probably seen as well, of this guy playing. Um, uh, guitar teacher extraordinaire, guitar player extraordinaire. Um, and a superb session musician in his own right. Um, it's very proud and privileged for me to uh, to finally get down and talk to uh, to Neil Meller. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for. Thanks I didn't for want to embarrass you too much with that, like that <laughs> massive. I, oh, I felt like I should start deepening my voice just to kind of prove <laughs> it. Really what you said. Watch, I just it was nice and deep on the first. Yeah. Kind of, but, uh, um, and these um, these chats that I've been having with with various people. Um, it's, there's no sort of framework, it's, I find it's better if we just kind of chat and kind of roughly stumble through what, your career and where you are at the moment. Like, um, first and foremost, it's, a, it's very comfortable for me to say that you're a, you are a professional guitar player. I'd like to think so, yeah. Isn't that yeah. a nice thing to say? Now, by professional, that means that you, 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 you earn a living playing guitar. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's fair to say. <laughs> and... It's interesting that the people that, when I said that I was going to speak to, 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 to Neil Mello, that um, they were like, well, how does, how does that even, how do you even get on that road to even kind of, you know, that you can live playing and doing the thing you enjoy? Um, where does that even, where's the, the first sort of gestation of that begin? Well, I honestly believe that, um, you know, you can do anything you want. And I know that may sound a bit of a cliche, but... For me, uh, when I was younger, I started playing a guitar when I was nine, and there wasn't really anything I was interested in. You know, it was music and guitar. I was interested in American football when I was a kid, but uh, sure. be, you know, being in Liverpool, there wasn't really, <laughs> at the time anyway, there wasn't really sure. any way where you could play American football. So all my time, effort, and energy went into listening to music, uh, you know, collecting records. Uh, tapes and uh, playing guitar uh, to to the point where you know my parents could see that it was some something that really uh, I was passionate about and uh, as well as having guitar lessons at school I had private guitar lessons and I also had music theory lessons as well so you know on a Monday I'd have music theory lessons and on a Wednesday I had my guitar lesson at school and I'd come home, have something to eat, and then I'd go and have my private guitar lesson. Wow. You know, so... It's like several hours a day of, of pretty much... Yeah. ...fairly intensive music training, yeah? Well, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of them things where, you know, my, my parents were, were happy for me to, uh, you know, be pursuing something I was passionate about. Sure. So, yeah, they, you know, I was... We were fortunate enough for them to support what I was doing. And we were like talking that. just before we started about Steve, Steve Vai, and we were saying um, we were saying that yeah, we, he had that famous just like twenty hour guitar routine, and people were like oh, yeah, 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 people were like oh you play for like 20, 20 hours, and he was like it it didn't seem that way to him. To him, he was like I just, it, it just happened to be that long because I enjoyed it. Was that was it, you, the thing with yourself? You, you didn't see it as being doing this music theory, then I'm going to this teacher, then you, you just enjoyed it. Well, it, it's funny you should mention that because one of the things that I say to, uh, you know, I've, I've got certain stories, uh, certain anecdotes that I tell my students, and one of them is uh, about reading American guitar magazines, you know, Guitar World, Guitar Player, and in, I can remember in one episode, it was like a, a shredder issue, and, you know, I had people like Tony McAlpine and uh, Malmsteen, and I can't remember who exactly it was, but, the, you know, the interviewer had said to them, okay, uh, how many hours a day did you practice when you were younger? And, you know, it's, uh, you know, 16 hours a day, 17 hours a day. Um, you know, so I can remember reading this thinking, shit, you know, if I want to be good, I've got to be... You've got to, you've got to do those hours. I've got to do them yeah. hours, yeah, you know. So uh, the thing was is that I didn't really know how to go about doing that. So, you know, I'd be 
I became the best list writer in the world. Uh, what, <laughs> okay. So what, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, uh, so, okay, I've got to perfect my uh, practice plan. Okay, so I'm going to practice scales for an hour. I'm going to practice chords for an hour. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do practice wise. You, you were just going to practice chords. That was what yeah, you were going to practice. You know, I, I, did, I had absolutely no idea how to go about practicing. Um, so I, I, I came up with this idea of, okay, well, I need to start practicing, you know, a silly amount of hours a day. So I did try um, doing 16 hours a day. You know, it was a Saturday and I had written this big practice plan and uh, it didn't really work. It didn't work for me. Uh, I was clock watching all the time. So right. like 15 minutes into it, I was thinking, you know, this felt, this feels like an hour. Right. You know, so uh, I'm sure there are guitar players and musicians who do like a prescribed practice plan, but that never really worked for me, especially in, in the uh, early days. Um, and I did manage this particular Saturday, uh, and I was only, only quite young, you know, I was off school and stuff, and um, I did try it. And I did get to the end of actually doing it for 16 hours, um, but I felt really ill okay. at the end of it. It, it, okay. made, it made me ill. Sure. Uh, so for about uh, uh, for about two weeks, I didn't practice. Right. Uh, just because I, it felt too daunting. Yeah. Now, of course, a lot of this was just naivety on my behalf yeah. about not knowing how to practice, what to practice. Uh, so I honestly believe that it's not down to the amount of time, even though the amount of time is important, it's the quality of the practice. Sure. You know, so um, I've developed uh, ways of practicing which are kind of practicing a few different uh, topics at the same time. Um, you know, and this is trying to enhance the practice, practice time available to me. Um, and of course, this, these are things that I then pass on to my students you know so anything that I teach my students it's things that I've created practice plan you know practice ideas sure. that I've either uh, came up myself or have been shown by uh, tutors that I've had lessons off and that you know it's it seemed to work do, do you remember the, the the first people that the the that taught you your first teachers do you remember them do you remember the the, the kind of lessons that are some vivid lessons where you're like uh, I, I didn't didn't get that at all, or that guy cut through and it got to, and it made, it made me understand something like a particular piece of theory or a way of looking at something or a, or a practice regime. Was there uh, those breakthrough moments? Could you attribute them to a particular teacher? Uh, yeah, there's um, there's there's things that you know we all have them eureka moments. Sure. Um, and uh, th there's nothing that springs to mind at, at, the, at the moment. I'm sure, you know, if I give myself a few minutes, I'll, I'll think sure, of something sure. that, that comes to mind. But uh, th there's certainly teachers that, uh, you know, who have really helped me along the way. You know, one of them is, uh, is, a, is a Liverpool guy uh, called John Wheatcroft. Uh, and I can remember seeing John Wheatcroft uh, many years ago uh, because he used to do guitar lessons for the council which were okay. held across the road from where we are now sure. in uh, Grand Central. Uh, it used to be called Central Hall right. and I think it was on a Tuesday night he'd done these rock guitar lessons. Oh, that's excellent, right? So, um, my, guitar t my private guitar teacher at the time was kind of a blues guitarist uh, and I learnt, you know, I learnt loads from him, but sure. <clears throat> I can remember saying to him, you know, I, I want to be able to do, uh, you know, some of the real technical rock stuff. Sure. And the good thing is, he, you know, he was honest with me, he said, oh, Neil, it, it's not something I do, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not, but, not but, that particular wheelhouse, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, you know, he's a great teacher, yeah, I've got yeah. a lot of respect for him because he, he taught me a, a lot of information. Um, but uh, he said to me, there's a guy that you've got to see, a guy called John Wheatcroft. Uh, he's an amazing rock guitar player and he does these lessons. Uh, they're, they're free, uh, anyone can go to them, but you have to kind of give a little bit of money. Do you know what I mean? So it's- Yeah, like a donation. Yeah, a donation. Yeah, yeah. So there was like a little uh, fee, I don't know, it was like two quid or something sure. like that. And um, 
I'd seen lots of videos of rock guitar players, uh, but I'd never seen anyone in person do, do those things. Do the over the top, yeah, you know, yeah. two handed tap and swap. Or bar picking. working and harmonics and stuff and yeah. all that type of squeals and things, yeah. So I can remember going to. Uh, Go, go into one of these lessons on a Tuesday night. Me and my dad had gave me a lift into town, um, and uh, it just blew my mind because what was, did he, what did he do? So you you sat, you you came in, you sat there, and he said, "Hey, my name's Neil." And was it a group of you? It, 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 it was a group lesson. Yeah. So did he did he did he do did he just did he sit there and play something just to, to, as a statement to say, "Listen, this is what I do." And no, sure well, to do this. What the, was the, the thing is that he'd been doing he'd been holding these classes for quite a long time and I'd only found out about them recent you know kind right. of recent yeah, yeah so he'd been probably doing them for a few months up until I was told about it so it was one of them where everyone just kind of sits down in a kind of a semicircle and uh, you know the, he's sitting in, in the uh it's like 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 a therapy group it's, it's like people just sitting around in chairs with the with the, the therapist at the front except this therapist is a guitarist yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, that, that's exactly it yeah and uh, he'd be showing, you know, uh, scales and uh, certain techniques and things like that. And he'd be hand, you know, giving you handouts and stuff. Now, for, to be honest, you know, the stuff that he was talking about was way beyond anything I'd ever... It's like modes and stuff and you weren't kind of there yet. So it was like the it, technical aspect of it. It, it was it was more theory based. Sure. Um, you know, I, I look at it now and it's kind of, yeah, it's pretty you know easy academic stuff yeah but, but at the time at the time this was right. way over my head did he know. did he play something do you remember like a piece he played and you thought to yourself well, i'm i'm way out of like that's 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 a million miles from where i am did he did he do anything like that like you know well i i, I could play a few kind of set tapping ideas sure. a few, you know a few flashy you could ideas get by with yeah, some good stuff but like, yeah. see seeing this guy play was just like you know my world changed it sure. was like oh my god this is amazing wow man. okay was um, his kind of was his, his touch so much as like that he could make it look easy and make it look fluid and put ideas together? Was he because he was like a very finished article? Was it that you saw? Well, it, he made it look easy almost. It was uh, kind of all of the above what you just okay. said, really, because I could see that this guy was a professional musician. Ah, yeah, sure. You know, and he was very, you know, I'd never seen anyone play the top shelf professional rock guitar yeah, yeah. player you know techniques mm -hmm. and phrases and things like and that and this guy's organized right he has to be he's teaching this he, he's got a plan he, he teaches a, a lesson if you will there's a there's a, a beginning middle and end to what he's doing so he's an organized guy going these are the ideas this is what we're going to cover this week you know yeah, the, that the, type of the, thing the ideas that he covered were you know he'd be playing some more over the top stuff do you know what i mean just sure. to kind of show well you can take this particular idea and put it into this context and it would just be like you know it's mind blown but, you but know it, but, just, but it, it started to kind of click together and make some sense and you were like kind of finding your way with that then well yeah it, it's, it's more a case of i was impressed that there was someone who um so a guy from Liverpool who could do this Okay, stuff. sure. Like you a know. real person. That yeah, you could yeah. talk to afterwards, he stopped playing guitar, yeah. Yeah. So it, it was um you know, it, you know, this is what I wanna do. Ah I wanna do was, this. Was that one of those moments where you just were like that's what I, I want to do. Like when someone sees the Beatles and they go, "Okay, I want that." You know, when someone sees someone, they you know scoring a goal. They want to be a footballer. Was was it was such a big a moment when you saw this guy play? You were like, it, you it, know what? It was in terms of the the rock. You know. I, yeah. I want to be a rock guitar player. You know, okay. I, I did before that. You know, cause yeah. I was listening to Iron Maiden and Queen. Did and he make it like... seem attainable? Was that what it, you, no. you thought? You, you could see that if he could do that, I could maybe get, maybe get that. If, if I could see it, and it was someone I knew, where it was a, wasn't a, a rock star from the planet Mars. It was someone I knew. It, did it make it seem attainable to becoming a professional musician? Uh, or was it I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say yes because <laughs> sure. the reason why I don't want to say yeah. yes is because it, I, I wouldn't want to. I, I wouldn't want that to come across as if I was devaluing what what I was seeing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it made me want to do it. Sure, I understand. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't that it was now more attainable. Hmm. It was just that uh, it was something in my mind and seeing. A guy in the flesh playing it it was like this is what i want to do sure um 
So you know, there's many. You know, that's just one example. Yeah, there's, I, I there's think it's many. probably quite telling. That, you know, that, that that you see that guy, and and it's like, okay, you know, this this is, is certainly one of the triggers to me. You know, doing what I wanted to do. So when I think a lot of people w- would probably want to know is that at what point did it become in inverted commas serious then for you? Then when did you start being able to? Um, go out perform in front of were you already performing in front of an audience or were you with a, in a band or what, what was the situation with you in terms of you know performing it in public well the, I, as i say i'd been playing since i was nine mm. but i hadn't really done any public performances um until i went to secondary school okay and uh, i was a few months in secondary school in my first year and uh, there was guys who were in the last year of, of secondary school and uh, they already played a bit and they were getting a band together and they said to me do you fancy being in the band sure so i was like yeah you know this, this sounds great this is this is good fun so um my first ever performance was uh, at a assembly in in school sure like in the middle of the day assembly like like 12 o'clock to yeah o'clock yeah in the day. Okay. I, I think it was um yeah, I think it was an afternoon assembly sure. kind of thing. But w- one of the things I, I can vividly remember is um, they, they had like uh, curtains, you know, so we were on the, the, the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have like the wooden floor and the wooden stage and stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. That's sure, it. sure. So I can remember being behind the curtain and what was going to happen was we were going to be introduced, sure. the curtains would open and then we'd start playing the song. Okay. And I can remember my hands were shaking. You really? Know, I was like really kind of... And you've been playing how long up until this point? So you started when you were nine, you were what, 14 maybe here? No, 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 a little this, bit younger? This, this is, uh, well this is first yeah. year senior, so oh, right, it's about okay. 11 isn't okay, it? Okay, yeah, about 11, 12, yeah, okay. So you were playing a couple of years, so you could you could play, you know, but it was like you were still shaking. Was it was it just simply oh, stage fight? Well, I, I think it's one of them, you know, like uh, when you watch a film and it, the, the camera zooms in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had, I had this moment of clarity, which was <laughs> shit. You know, I'm about to play You've in front of the school here. Yeah. You know, oh Jesus, you know. <laughs> so it was. You what know, was what was the song? What was the first song? It was uh, every. Every breath you take. Oh, well, you see, now that's got that tricky. That's not an easy chord, even by any. That's a that's a quite a difficult chord. And what that's that's like got to be. And, and I've got Tim with me here for anybody uh, wondering where Tim is. He's always by my side, my faithful trusty. Hello. Uh, so that's the worst opening song I think you could ever do. Well, well we were playing it in the key of G, so it wasn't as tricky as it. <laughs> You know, so I can't remember what the original key. I think it's A, isn't I it? I think it's A. Yeah. It's so we, we were playing it in G, so you've got easier shapes to play for it's that. Sure, yeah, yeah, but it's like it's not. There's a much easier shape you can play for that than G one, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so. isn't that like the way? I, th- I thought you were going to say, uh, "And we played, you really got me." And yeah. I'd be like, "I'm like, yeah, that opens it." Okay, so curtains open just before you were a little bit kind of like well, reticent be, about it and be, then before that you know i could feel my hands shaking sure. and it was like oh shit what am i gonna do you know and i can remember just telling myself just to just to calm down because i it was one of them moments where if i let it get away if i if i let the emotion yeah, overcome, overcome yeah. me yeah i wouldn't be able to play yeah, yeah, yeah. so i had this you know another realization which was uh just calm down so I started slowing my breathing. My, my hands start, didn't shake as much. Mm. They were still shaking, yeah, but yeah. not nowhere near what they were <laughs> what they were doing sure. when the the camera zoomed in. <laughs> kind of sure. So um, the curtains opened and we started. We played the song, and it, it was uh, you know it was a great experience. It was I really like this. You know, it was. Um, yeah, it was just a good feeling, you know. It's nice to be able to entertain people, and and that was the that first round. I, t- I assume you got a round of applause. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's normally the th- isn't that amazing? Though? The, 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 I don't think that goes on in in schools anymore, where they have like performances and stuff like that. I think that's maybe I don't you know don't well, know if that happens an awful lot anymore. Like you know, well, the, the 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 good thing for myself was that at the time, um, we had council paid. Uh, paid for music lessons yeah. you know so i didn't have to pay for these guitar lessons that i had at school 
And I don't think that's the case. Anymore. I don't think I, it is. I can confirm that that is not the case now. And it's and it's not incredible, you know. I mean, just like that, we just we've lost that, you know. We in just... fact, in fact, schools have to pay for the music services of the council. It's that, that's yeah. unbelievable. That is that's 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 tragic. That we lost something yeah. like that definitely. Yeah. So, uh, so you 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 begin to play live. Um, so you're around like eleven or twelve. I'm thinking, when did that take uh, a move to be in, into like a club or in a pub? When did that happen, that well, shift? Okay, so it, it's it's kind of along the same lines, really, because, um, as I say, this band I was playing with, you know, the school band, um, the guys who I was playing with, that was their last year of, of school. Right. So when they had done the GCSEs and they left, um, there was a couple of guys who started playing guitar who were in my year, and... Um, we all got together and we, we formed our new rock band, sure. you know, and uh, again, we played our uh, carol concerts and we played at assemblies and things like that. And what happened was, is that we were all in uh, the Venture Scouts. Right. And, uh, you know, we'd all go on uh, camping trips and things like that, as well as being in the band. And... Uh, the head or the, the guy who run the Venture Scouts, he was also a DJ. Right. And uh, when he done things like um, charity nights, he asked us, did we want to play, you know, do a gig in, in a club? Because of yeah. course we, we, we weren't old enough to be able to go into clubs and play Yeah, clubs. so the kind of little sort of side way of doing that is, you know, you can play in a band and you can you can still be well, there. With it being a charity night, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of you know, relaxed as, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, as long as they're not drinking alcohol. Yeah, but, you know, it's, that it's, kind it's, of it's thing. fine, it's fine. So, um, yeah, so we, we play quite a few uh, social clubs and things like that. Sure. And uh, so that, that was kind of my first, you know, playing in a club. Right, and, you know, and it was cool. It, it was great fun, and you know, I'd always kind of dreamed of being in a band and the camaraderie and all that sure, kind of thing. Sure, sure. And it was always all good fun. Um, so yeah, that that was the, kind of the route into playing in clubs. Uh -huh. uh, but of course, that kind of, you know, the the school bands kind of fell apart when we all left school because we all kind of went our separate ways, it's kind of thing. Like, yeah. And. Um, you know, we, we all done different things. I went to music college and the other guys went and done different things. So I think I was a year into uh, music college, which Tim was also at. Uh, Tim is yeah. in the same year as me. Yeah, I was, yeah. And um, I got I got a phone call off, uh, off this guy just out of the blue. And um, he said, uh, oh, I've just got your phone, I've just got your phone number from um, Will from Fret's Old New. Now, Fret's Old New is a, a, a guitar shop in Fazakley. And, uh, you know, like any young guitar nerd, you, you visit every shop and you, sure. you bore the hell out of the uh, guys working there <laughs> by uh, trying every guitar out in the shop, even though there's no chance you can afford any of them. <laughs> So but the, it happens to us now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Neil, Neil, Neil uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Neil, Neil works at, at Kelly Music, and um, and we'll go into this a little bit a little bit later. We'll, we'll talk about uh, guitar shop etiquette as well, more than anything else. Um, that that was weird. We we, we came when, before we, we kind of set up. We were I was alone in the, the guitar shop. It's so weird. That's a weird thing. It's like being in a factory when the when the factory stop. Like you don't want to. I don't want to touch any of the guitars. You know, when when any. you're alone in a guitar shop at night, strings relax. <laughs> With where, as the temperature dips, strings relax. Okay. You hear the string go, ding, and you're like, "Well, what the shit was that? <laughs> is that is that, is that, is that real or is, or is no? Genuinely, I was I was recording acoustic guitar in harmonics music. And the strings I was, relax. I was sat there. Ping. I was sat there, and one of the Martin guitars went. Thing. <laughs> as as the wound one of the wound strings just slipped over the nut you know exactly what I'm talking about yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like a house it's like moving and it's yeah. like this 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 A this A note just goes boom and I was like oh holy shit <laughs> <laughs> been watching some horror films the night before and yeah that's so, like, you know, but that's what it was like like that it's just, it requires it's just, it's just it's strange it's like seeing behind the curtain like you know it's like um, 
And Randy Rhodes was going and getting his, uh, his, 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 his custom made. He invited him to the factory and he didn't want to go because he didn't want to see it being made. He didn't want to let into the magic, oh, yeah. like the same thing. Um, so yeah, so we're at the stage now where you're kind of you're in you're in college, music college now, which I assume then obviously by its very definition you're learning a hell of a lot more and you're amongst more musicians and, and I would assume more teachers as well. Yeah, well, so just to finish off this this story about Will from Frets. Oh yeah. Um, this guy had rang me up because he had got my phone number off Will, and the reason why I fell. Uh, Will, sorry. The reason why Will had my phone number is because I started teaching guitar. And the reason why I'd started teaching guitar was simply because, um, you know, playing these social clubs and playing a few gigs that we'd done, uh, a few people had approached me to ask to uh, teach guitar. And um, I thought, well, you know, I'm not a guitar teacher. You know, I'm a guitar student who has guitar lessons, but there must be something that these people see in me to approach me and ask about sure. do I teach? So I said, well, I've got to be honest, I don't, I'm not a guitar teacher, but I'll show you what I know. And that's kind of how my guitar- That's the start of the process. That's yeah. the, the start of the guitar teaching. So that's the reason why Will from Fret had my phone number. Now, the reason why the guy had rang me is because he had uh, a cover band okay. uh, and the guitarist that they had had left and um, he had spoken to Will and he said, oh, you've got to get this lad in, you know. He's always in here, really playing his, really rock, you know, rock guitar playing. Um, so, you know, he asked me, did I want to join this band? And it was just a classic rock band. You know, we'd done a few blues, uh, kind of rock blues songs. And so I said, yeah, you know, that, that sounds great. Um, and I can remember uh, doing the first gig. Now, I'd done gigs before, of course, but this was my first proper gig. This is the first gig I, I was getting paid for. Ah, so it is the first gig, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so this is the first sure. adult gig. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you get paid, you're a professional. It's yeah, as simple as that you know, so it was, uh, you know, I was bit nervous again I was like yeah, oh, yeah. Shit, you know, well, it's, it's for money now yeah <laughs> it, it, it counts now yeah, it, it counts, it counts now. you know so sure. um where was it it oh god where, it was the valentine pub in entry okay tough crowd <clears throat> that's a tough, no, it, tough it, crowd. Was, it was it was quite all right actually right. you know um quite an enjoyable gig you know but uh yeah, just like, whew, you know, hey, you know, I'm moving on now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going up, I'm going yeah. to, to the next step, yeah. yeah. And, and especially, um, you know, it was, it was like a new chapter because, of course, I, I, had, I was in music college now and um, I started doing gigs where I'm getting paid, you know. And it was all, all a bit of fun because, of course, the, the guys in the band were, you know, they had day jobs. They were a lot older than me uh, at the time and... Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so that, that was kind of my uh, first paid gig, really. Yeah, you know? so and then we, we'd done lots of other gigs after it, you know, it was like a, you know, a gig every week or a gig every two weeks, you know, so it wasn't, sure. you know, I wasn't out gigging, you know, seven nights a week, but yeah. it, it was nice, it was nice to do. It was consistent enough that you thought that you, your playing was improving as well, you know, that you, 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 you're in a situation where you've got to learn some songs, uh, you know what I mean? You've got to play in front of an audience. It's got to be a bit of showmanship about it as well. You know, you've got to learn to take care of your gear and and and, and well, well, the, the, get to shows. You know, just the, the, the very mechanics the, of it. The funny thing is, is that uh, you know, you, you know, I've got audio tapes of, of these uh, gigs sure. because uh, I used to bring like a you know a tape machine and just record it. Okay, just so I could critique what you know, yourself. Do yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so hold on, how, how old are you at this point then? Um, I was probably about 17. You're 17, recording your own things and critiquing us. That, that's pretty, that's pretty tough. You know, that's, I, I don't know how many 17 year olds I, who play guitar, I know, record themselves. But you have some things then, the, maybe now, because it's easier. The but. thing is, you, you haven't heard them, so. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing was, is that we used to have this intro for the gig. Okay. And, um, you know, just imagine this, we're in a, we're in a you know, you're in a local pub. And the the, uh, the bass player, you know, he's a lovely guy, you know, he's a real good player, but he's a massive Rush fan. <laughs> so he's, he's got this Rickenbacker copy bass. Sure, it sounded yeah. really good. 
But he also had these like uh, organ pedals. Okay, yeah, because he's, he's getting lease. He's, yeah, he wants he, to set the whole thing up. Yeah, but he he's, he, <laughs> he wanted to find a use for them. So I, I came up with this idea. Let's, let's come up with this big intro for the gig. Okay. So this is in a pub. I've oh, got to put the context of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is a pub. You know, a mixture of ages and stuff. And he's got this uh, kind of uh, choir, you know, setting on the uh, the rack unit that he's right. linked it to. So he, pl- you know, he, he p- plays the the note of E. So you've got this oh, <laughs> kind of sound coming in, and then I just go with you know, and they start going crazy, flying, yeah. set, setting the fretboard on fire, <laughs> you know. And I listen to it now, and I, and you know, I'm half embarrassed and half laughing just because you know what the hell was That's I thinking? Just, yeah, you know, finish it with some. Uh, you know, big sweet pick licks, and uh, you know, the, well, I was I was really into Satriani at the time, and I think around that time I just learnt how to do the the trem squeals. You yeah, know, yeah. So so there was all I would have played. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> just going absolutely nuts with this thing, and then we we go into sharp dressed man by CZ. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, that's what? an opener, right? That's an opener. What the hell was I thinking? With that? <laughs> so, unfortunately, I listen back to it now, and, and the, uh, the the lack of taste you Just, know, was was, <laughs> was epic. You know, it was very spinal tap, but I loved every minute of it. You yeah, know, so. but that's that. I that's got to be that. These are rites of passage as a guitar player. These are right rites of passage where you have to play those shows, and, and I'm sure if anybody listened back, like you know. When they were that, when they were that age, when they were first playing, I'm sure they could pick up their playing to hell, like you know. Oh, I wouldn't play that, but you've got to kind of. I figure you've got to get through that. So then, when did um, which came first, really? The the, the, the sort chicken of, or the egg? Well, the, the, yeah. <laughs> in this case, the um, the the g- g- working in a guitar store to teaching to session work. When which which where was this kind of placement? Then was it? Well, it was actually. Um, it was the teaching thing really because when I was in uh, music college uh, I got approached by uh, one of the tutors who uh, had written a course for uh, an, uh, a music shop right um, and he had written this course that you know all the teachers would teach from and uh, someone had mentioned to him that uh, I do you know oh, Neil teaches privately because uh, I, I think at this point um, you know I had started taking it a bit serious in terms of you know I'm not just um, you know doing favors and people come up to me you know I am kind of I am, I'm a serious guitar teacher sure, now. sure. so um, you know I had quite a few regular students and so I was approached to uh, teach in, in this music shop um, so that was my, you know, in the same way that my first proper, my first professional gig was the one I got paid for. Sure. Well, this was my first kind of professional teaching role because it wasn't me teaching around at somebody's house. Yeah, or as a favour or something like that. It was, yeah, someone come to you and you're giving them a lesson based on a period of time on a particular subject for a certain fee. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's the basics of it. Uh, the, the tough thing with this is that this particular course was teaching in groups okay. and I'd never done that before I'd always taught one to one so um, you know it's like do you think you can do it can you teach a group and it was uh, yeah you know, I, I, you know I've never done it I've been honest I've never done it before but I'm sure I can do it uh, I'll give it a go I'll, I'll do my best um, you know and so I didn't start working in guitar shop straight away it was working in a guitar sh- in a music store right. teaching teaching music yeah it's just like an avenue for that and uh, the reason why I'm not mentioning the particular uh, sure shop yeah, was that's because okay um, I didn't really like the way in which the money was getting cut sure you know so uh, you know I don't I, uh, I don't really want to sound like sour grapes kind of thing. So you just weren't happy with the arrangement that was going on with there. That's so that's the thing okay. is, that I did teach there for um, I think it was about three or four years. Okay, that's a long. That's a long time. You must have developed like a lot of students in that time. Did you have a lot of regulars? Did you have like? A- oh yeah, well, I, I was teaching. Um, I was teaching three days 
uh, wow, a week. Okay. You know, so okay. I was teaching two midweek uh-huh. lessons, and I was teaching on a Saturday as well. Right. Um, and these are all group lessons. Okay. How so, big are the groups? Are we talking three people? Are we talking a, a room full? Or what? What? It, it was um, the least amount was four people, okay. and the most amount was. Uh, just over 10 so like 11 or 12 sure like okay that. that's pretty big groups then yeah yeah uh you know i, I learned a lot from it because try you know crowd control sure. you know trying to well, you learn to become a teacher you know in yeah. respect of the guitar a thing and your knowledge with that you learn to actually teach to a group of people like yeah well it, it's one of them things where you know if you've got a group of uh guitar players in a room it's hard to get them to shut up do you know what i mean so even if they're not plugged in, they're always bloody fiddling and sure. playing licks, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so trying to get everybody just to shut up and listen, you know, it was a, an art in itself. You know I mean? <laughs> that was the same in college. Yeah, well, I know why you're saying that because it was usually me doing all the. <laughs> <laughs> so. There was a certain bass player, if you remember him, with curly hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he's, he's a lovely endless, guy. Endless, endless lovely guy. I was a man with him for a long, long time, and you never shut up then either. <laughs> yeah. So, when you're there. Uh, I think I think a lot of people will will uh, certainly this day and age, which makes me sound very very old. But now, obviously, we li- we live in a world where there's there's YouTube and endless instructional material, and uh, I, I, the the world is worth of knowledge on on the internet, uh, multiple ways of learning. Is there is is there still a place for the the guitar teacher? You know, the, the one person sitting down with that other person and working it out with them. I mean, all about if that's over Skype or whatever, but that one-on-one interaction, did you find, you must have found that valuable when you started and you must have seen the value of that teaching to, to, to people yourself. Well, there's, uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I've had a lot of um, guitar players and music teachers, you know, not just guitar teachers, but music teachers over the years. And uh, dare I say, some are better than others. Some I found able to get the information across you know in a in a more personal way as in they could you know the, the tutor could identify where i was going wrong what i was struggling with and help me with it you know and that becomes a, a more personal lesson sure where you know you can get some other teachers who have got the idea of during this lesson i'm going to teach these set out ideas and that's it you know it's not a, it, it they don't pick up on who's uh, struggling with it, who obviously needs more help and attention on certain things, or who's lacking um, you know, pieces of the puzzle for that information that they're talking about at the moment to make sense. Sure. Uh, so there'll always be a place for one-to-one guitar tuition. You know, the, the, it's fantastic that there's, you know, the internet and DVDs and videos and, you know, all, all this tuition material. Um, it's fantastic the thing is is that it doesn't mean that there's going to be better players or anything like that there's more outlets to get information from Uh, things are more accessible because you know if you've got a a phone with uh, access to the internet you can you know, access lots of information, which is fantastic. But the thing is, you still got to practice it. To apply that, you still got to apply it. You're still going to go down the same rounds. There's the same pitfalls are still going to be there. Uh, and having that one-to-one kind of uh, relationship with a with teacher, really, in terms of I can see where you're at. Um, I can see the pitfalls that you're falling into right now. Or I can see the pitfalls you're you, you're possibly gonna fall into. Um, Steer them away from. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know, even just like uh, I can remember certain tutors explaining to me. Um, okay, you know, here's a piece of information. Now, don't practice it like this. You know, and okay, showing well, me the yeah, reasons yeah. why. Yeah, you know, yeah. don't do it like this. And I, I'll you know give you examples of why you shouldn't really do it this way. And the, it made sense. And of course, it was very important, you know, I, I find it very important to be shown what to steer clear from and the reasons why, as well as being shown these are the best ways I can personally recommend on showing you sure. how to practice this, and here's the reasons why. It isn't, isn't that almost 
experience in, in a nutshell that is experience showing someone the not only the pitfalls as well as the but as well as the, 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 the clear routes to go that's down the whole, that's the whole purpose of a teacher hmm. you know so it, it's so if i was if i was a uh, one of the, the things that we we got asked when i saw, was said i was going to speak to yourself was at what point does uh, someone who plays any instrument but let will we'll, we'll, we'll tie it to the guitar at what point should they think about a tutor you know is it from the very beginning it's a, is, it, is it is it individual choice really is it it's, it's on individual the choice you sure know, the, the thing is is that i have heard people say i'm self-taught now it depends on what your definition of self-taught actually is is self-taught meaning that you've worked it all out yourself you know you, you've worked out harmony yourself without consulting a book because even if you get a book is that really self-taught? I, I don't believe it is. I, 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 don't, I don't. I believe it's like it's like saying I'm a mathematician because I've worked out stuff that I've worked out theories, but I haven't seen those theories. I've worked them out myself with a blackboard and worked. I'm, I'm worked my way through that. It, you, in order to like you know, how do you fall upon modes without without having at least some sort of you know knowledge of it? How do you you know? How do you fall on techniques you know, just out of nowhere, you know? Well, that's, that's kind of my point, really, where, you know, anyone who says that they're self-taught, you know, a part, a part of me questions the, the validity of that, really. Sure. You know, so you know, if you're having a conversation with a friend of yours who, who's a musician and he, they give you a piece of information, well, that is a lesson. Yeah, right, right there. It, it is the exact example of a lesson. Here it is how to do something. Yeah, be it boil an egg, or you know, or, or play a riff. You know. So, so the the thing is, is that you know, you mentioned before about uh, experience. You know, and if someone is uh, willing to give you experience, you know, their the, the knowledge and wisdom. Uh, you know, I'm I'm all for it. You know, sure. uh, you know, and. It, as I say, I was fortunate enough to, to have quite a lot of um, amazing guitar teachers and, and very kind friends over you know who are musicians as well over the years who have helped me out, who, who have seen that I was struggling with a piece of information, could see that I'm passionate and you know it's something that I wanted to do and uh, help me out, sure. you know. Okay, yeah, I, this is how you should think of it or yeah. this is what you should do with this and um have you tried this you know so that that really helped me over the years you know i must say though that i have you know it sounds a bit horrible this but i have had teachers you know i'm not mentioning any names of course who have done the exact opposite yes who with hindsight i know they could have helped me but they didn't sure you know and, and um you know, I always find that a little bit upsetting, really. Yeah. Um, because uh, I put my faith in them to help me out when when. Uh, yeah, there's, there's the, the the biggest element for me with a, with a, uh, a teacher, certainly a guitar teacher, is that element of trust. You you're you're leaving yourself open so someone can go, okay, here's some colours to paint with. You know, and and if they give you the bad wiring, the bad information, that's that's an abuse of that trust between a teacher and their students. You know, the expectation is that the teacher teaches that person clearly. You know, and 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 try and just provide them with the information and the tools to to take what they will from that. You know. Well, the thing is, is that I'm I'm actually quite pleased that that took place in a way. Okay. And the reason is, is because it made me realise the importance of being a teacher. Sure. and how life-changing that can be and it, it might sound a bit dramatic me saying that but you know i can say with my hand on my heart that i have had lessons of teachers who have changed my life you know so sure opened the door to <clears throat> some quite complicated information or you know just certain techniques or even just a way of um just a way of teaching really where you know, I'm a sure, method, if you will, like, yeah, yeah. Well, the um, thing is, I'm sure we, we've all got, you know, it doesn't have to be music teachers, like, but I'm sure we've all got, um, you know, the teacher at school that we were very f fond of because they were just down to earth and they sure. wouldn't talk to you in a... Um, Condescending. Condes yeah, yeah, yeah. They would just talk to you. on the same you. level. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, is that when you're a student, you, you know, you really appreciate that. 
and you it be, I think that helps learning from that person as well. It kind of if if you can get on a similar level with someone, imparting information and receiving information, I would imagine becomes a whole lot easier. Um, it takes it takes a fence out the way. It takes a, a, a something that would normally block that out the way. You know. Well, yeah, I, I agree. But it, but it also for me, it came, it, it kind of made me realise that teachers don't have to be. I'm the teacher and you're the student. Sure. It's, you know, yeah, you're coming to me for, for a lesson, uh, but let's just, you know, we're on a level here, you know, there's no, you know, the ego is left at the door kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you bring, you bring up like Satriani and obviously one of his favorite students was Vi and I don't, I, I believe maybe initially it started as a teacher and students, but it's, it, it certainly didn't develop into that. You know, that, that's just two people who enjoy playing and they found that, you know, they're very kindred spirits, you know, and that's, I'm sure as much as Satriani uh, taught Vi, the Vi taught Satriani, I'm sure there's a lot of that. So I can understand having, you know, someone who you find very comfortable to, 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 to be around and to learn to take information from. I imagine that, that gives you leaps and bounds over a poor teacher. In fact, a poor teacher, like you said, can maybe even regress someone, you know, can, oh, God, can yeah, put them yeah. off the instruments, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, so uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm thinking, uh, one of the other questions that we had is, is uh, should we get, and when should we get a teacher, a teacher is how do I, or when should I become a teacher? What are what are the skills that if someone's listening to this now and going, okay, I think I'm particularly proficient. I, I've got a good good knowledge. I feel as though I'm a pretty good teacher. I've maybe you know showed some people in the in the bedrooms a few bits and pieces of this, and you know showed a couple of friends this and the other. When does the leap go to actually right? I can I can charge for this. I can provide as a service. When does when should that happen? What qualities does someone need to have then? Ooh, I don't know. Really. I mean, aside aside from <laughs> aside from obvious technical ability, you know, that that person obviously should understand it, the fundamentals of whatever they're teaching. Is there other qualities as well? You know, um, well, the the thing is, is that um, it, well, sorry, if I can just answer the the, the previous question, sure. just just to kind of kind of put a full stop after that. Um, if if a student is looking for lessons. Um, they should take them, you know. So uh, try, you know, search out <clears throat> different things, you know, videos, books. Because when I was learning, I wasn't just getting my information from one source; it was getting it from multiple sources. Because there's certain things, um, you know. So you'll read something in a book, or you'll watch a, a tuition video, and uh, some things will make sense; some other things won't make sense. But, you know, so, so you've got like an unfinished jigsaw puzzle, you know, and if you have private lessons, the, um, you know, hopefully the, the teacher can help you fill in them missing pieces. Yeah, fill in the gaps, yeah. You know, and, and the same could be said the other way around, you know, you, you could um, have a lesson with a teacher and you, you understand some of it, but again, there's missing pieces that you might pick up on from reading a book or, or from, say, you know, watching it, what, well, what is now like YouTube yeah, videos YouTube or, or instructional videos. <clears throat> yeah. So you know, if you're thinking about having lessons, I would say just go for it. You know, try it out. You know, uh, try it out with with um, a, you know, find a teacher who you respect. You like the way they play. You've got a lot of respect for um, you know the, the music that you've heard of them play. You know, it's, it's got to be someone who inspires you. You know. I think that's absolutely key. Like, yeah, I think I think over, overarching everything that we said here so far is it has to be someone that lights a fire within you for for to, to cover it in cliches, but it's got to be someone who who inspires you. I totally believe that. Yeah. So um, to go on to your other question, which was when, yeah, when do you know when do you become a teacher? When is what what qualities do you need to have? Um. Well, patience. patience. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that patience. Yeah, yeah. Sure, but it's um, funny we, we laugh and we laugh it, because it, we all know that that is such a key element to someone stumbling through something and learning something. If you're doing it because you think it's a good way of earning money, don't do it. Because when I, you know, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. If you think that you can genuinely help improve someone's guitar playing and music theory, then do it. You know, but. You know, 
I, I don't want to be the one who who dictates when someone or shouldn't do sure, something. Sure. You know, that's entirely up to them. But uh, if you're doing something for money, you know, get it. You know, become a, a solicitor or a lawyer sure. or someone who, who's going to earn a lot of money because um, you know you, the reason why you become a teacher is for the love of it, not for the money. Yeah. Um, the reason why I become a guitar teacher is because, um, well, a few different reasons really. Um, I love music, I love the guitar, I love teaching. Um, I was lucky enough to have a lot of uh, music teachers and guitar teachers who, as I mentioned before, had a big impact on me. And, uh, you know, in some ego centered way, you know, I would like to. You know, I would like to think that I could have that same effect on someone else. Sure, I think that I think uh, that's the beautiful sort of three sixty of, of of being a teacher. I would imagine I've not taught anybody. I well, I would say to taught anybody, but I imagine the payoff is this: is that you initially have a teacher who teaches you something that opens up your world to something that you know changes your world, and then eventually you get the chance to pass that information on and do that for someone else. And that for me is, the, is probably the beauty of, of teaching anybody anything, you know, from, you know, water skiing to playing the piano to, you know, flower arranging is, the, is that moment when you can hand that almost back. I don't think that's, I, I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you said that there was an ego to that. I don't think that's what I think. It's a, I think it's a very pure thing that about taking it all the way around and going to someone else. Listen, I had a life changing guitar teacher. Hopefully some of your students go away after the lesson and go, you know what? That's what I want to do. I want to go and do this particular thing for the for the rest of my life. That's a that's a very pure thing that I think. It's I quite feel. zen because you have to. I start think it's very zen. You have to start again though, don't you? Almost when you teach someone new. Yeah. You almost start again well, every time. Yeah. Is it a case of that, like? Yeah. Is it a case? Of, do you have to assess them as well? Do you have to sit there and go, okay, let's let's see what you have. Well, uh, let's see what I've got to work with, and then start moulding that to what they, they well, maybe the, want to the, do. The thing the thing with myself is, um, you know when i you know you get to a certain point where you, you your own plane plateaus you know and this happens many many times you know you get sick of hearing your own guitar playing you get sick of the way you think about guitar you get you know so what i do then is i usually take a few steps backwards and what i mean by that is i reevaluate what i know and i try and find a, a more productive <coughs> excuse me a better way um, of viewing that the, the information I already know. Okay. And by by doing that, it's like you get different levels of information. You know, so when you think you've uh, wrung a piece of information dry for all it's worth, you know, can you go? Can you take it onto another level? You know, can you get deeper level of understanding with that piece of information? Um, so by doing that it, it's like you're uh, quickening up your reaction to a piece of information um so you're streamlining your the knowledge that you know and by doing that it makes it more accessible it makes it quicker it makes your reaction time to it quicker um and i believe that it makes it easier to teach you know because you know it so you know that information so well uh, you can teach it in a way where you've already streamlined it in such a way where it's probably a lot more streamlined than the way you were first taught it oh, yourself because you've kept on got taking the steps back going over it um, you know and the reason why I do that is because I find that you know by streamlining an information I know it allows me to take that big leap forward with learning new information and of course, you know, with music, you end up bolting pieces of information together, you know, arpeggios and scales, you know, you, the overlap and, you know. And that effectively it, becomes your style, your sound or your, well, your the, the method. method. Yeah, the, the method in, in which you, you think about composing music or, or, you know, improvising, you know, the way in which you structure your musical sentences, the way in which you think about, um, you know, take, taking these tools that you've learned, the scales, arpeggios, you know, methods of, uh, of playing, and, uh, you know, it becomes your voice, becomes sure. your accent, you know.
I think that's uh, how we doing for time. I'll just check with Tim, make sure we're okay. Okay, good, good. Uh, there, there's some wonderful things there. I mean, one of the, the key things we were, we, we were trying to do with these sorts of sit downs with people is get those uh, those kind of nuggets of wisdom of you know. And there's, there's some fantastic stuff there. One of the things that um, that Neil's been involved in, or the, the other thing that people were asking about is um, session work and things like that, and kind of doing demos and performance things like that, um, and. I'm just kind of wondering kind of what sort of things have you done around that type of thing have you done like kind of you know you have nam stuff where you kind of you will get up and perform with a, with a piece of equipment or a series of guitars or whatever what type of things did you do around that because that's a very that's that's a very closed room that seems that whole sort of scene of that well um i, I can't it's one of them things where you you, you kind of get offered that mm -hmm. you know I, I never really went searching for a lot of that to be honest but um you know you you uh you know it's like anything you get friendly with people who are in the business you know teaching from music shops you know helps you know because sure. you get to meet reps which in like that room of that yeah um you know so I, I've, I've demoed for various sound companies uh play for a few guitar uh companies as well and uh you know a few uh, local guys who make pedals and you know sure. boutique stuff I've, I've, I've played guitar shows for uh it's not something i regularly do to, to be honest it's you know the odd you know one off every now and again sure. but I've, I've done session work in the studios and but again I, you know it's not it's not regular it's uh, sure. just you know it's, it, it's all recommendations you know um I need a guitar player to be able to play this. I know the guy, you know, a mate of mine's an amazing rock guitar I, I, player. It, it seems to me from the, the session players that I know is that it, it seems a lot of it rests on two, two very key things. One is like a reliability and being actually just being generally being a good person to work with, you know, prompt on time, easy going to work with, as a, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis, and then being incredibly versatile, being able to go in and they go, okay, well, we need some guy to play an acoustic song, we need some guy to play the banjo, we need to get a guy to play in different keys, and, and I believe it's sort of a combination of that is what seems to make very good session musicians. I don't know if you'd find that from the, the, the ones you've worked with or, you know, well, I was I was in a band um, uh, which was made up of session musicians. Okay. Um, it, it was a Liverpool band, and it was you know again I don't really want to mention names. Sure, the, sure. The, 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 okay, <laughs> the, that's fine. The, the reason why is simply because the uh, the band kind of imploded for for various reasons. As bands often do, as yeah, well, this happens. Yeah. You know, it was kind of management screwing us over. But sure, um, the the band consisted of. Uh, three very kind of high profile session musicians right. who have played with um you know anyone who knows me kn knows who they are kind sure of, but, sure sure um who'd played with people that i know everyone's heard you know uh being a very so these these three session musicians um that i was playing with it was the singers band uh and he, he had hired these three session musicians and that he just needed a guitar player and I was recommended to be the guitar player. And um, so that was kind of like a big session for me because, you know, I've done various bits and bobs over, over the years, like, but that was kind of a, quite a big one because things started getting serious then. Uh, you know, we had guitar companies getting involved, um, you know, and I think I was only about... Um, 18, 19 wow. at the time. So, you know, this is like, you know, oh my God, I'm going, you know, this, I'm, <laughs> it's going to get big, yeah. you know. And it, sadly, I, I think, you know, good things could have happened, but I think some egos got in the way, you know. Sure. It, what, that, I can happily say it wasn't mine. Sure. Um, but, you know, like a lot of bands do, in, the, the whole thing implodes, you know, as soon as money, and contracts mm. get on the on the uh, mm. on the table you know silly things happen people do silly things changes the decision making process yeah, yeah. well it is it, st it stops being especially if people are getting paid more than others it uh, causes friction it doesn't yeah, yeah. Really. so the, the sadly that you know that that the business side of things really kind of, kind of ruined the musical side of things yeah well it, it ruined the camaraderie mm. and that, that was the um 
that was some of the poison that was, sure. that was in that particular sure. um, experience. But um, you know, I got I got a lot of experience out of it. You know, I worked with you know via that particular project. I worked with some high profile producers. Um, you know, I went into a pro professional studio, which I'd never Just, really done before. Because I, I, I know stu studio and session players, I've never actually done it. What? So is it, how much do you know about what you're going into? Is it a case of you go into the, the, the studio and they go, okay, this is the, first of all, do you have to be able to read music? I assume that's just a given. For, for a, no, no, really? No, you know, reading music is. I thought that was how they sorted out the 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 the, the week from the chart. The week from the chart. I yeah. thought that's how they did that. You'd be like, okay, you know, can you read this chart? No, okay. Well, anyway. the, the, the the distinction you're gonna make is, um, you know, the, there's a difference between the, you know, well, well for a start, I, I don't really class myself as a session musician as such. Sure, you know? sure. I'm a guy who's who just played, happened to have played some sessions. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. There's, there's a difference between, you know, someone like Steve Lukather, who is a session musician. Yeah, be, people pay for his sound or his well, touch. Back, that back, it, you know, thing, yeah. back in the, the day in the 80s and, you know, obviously the time before it, um, you know, the, a record company would be churning out, you know, records by different artists and they, they needed a backing band to be able to, you know, put the songs together and, yeah. or, you know, work with high level producers and stuff like that. So the kind of sessions that you get nowadays are not really, you know, it's not that kind of vibe really. You sure. know, it's um, it's a bit, a bit a lot, you know, especially if you're working with a rock band, it's a lot loose. It's, um, you know, I got a phone call. Uh, we're finishing off uh, recording this EP uh, and we need the guitar Ooh. playing. You know, they had had, uh, the guitar guitarist previous to me, who, who was in the band, uh, had recorded a a, um, a rough guitar part for it. But they, you know, they had this producer down, and they needed to to record the what was going to go on, you know, on the release. So um, I turned up. I didn't know what I was going to play. I hadn't heard the songs, you know, because don't this was before the internet. Wow. You know, this this sure, is yeah. when you could look it up and go, okay, I know the song, or he could send you bits and pieces and what have you. Yeah, yeah. So th this was what you know. This was way before I had a mobile phone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This this is uh, sure. you know this is in in my youth, in my which, youth. which makes me sound like I didn't say that just for the record. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> so you know, this is making me make me feel old as well, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, so it's one of them. You know, you turn up at the studio, you turn up on time, you bring some gear with you know I brought two guitars and I brought some effect pedals and they, they said that you know they don't need to bring amps they had amps there so they, they had um, a selection of guitars they had uh, three Gibson Les Pauls a um, a Gretsch uh, what looked like a Les Paul I can't remember what the model is sure now. sure and uh, they said you can use these if you want to um, now for, for the for the sound that needed for this particular session, it was more of a, you know, it was a riff based. It wasn't like a whittly, you know, rock, epic rock sure. guitar standing on a cliff kind yeah, of solo. Yeah, you sure. know? Um, so I said, yeah, sure, okay, yeah, you know, so, you know, I used this uh, Les Paul standard and it, oh, it was a beautiful guitar. And um, so uh, I plugged straight into a Marshall stack and, you know, just getting on full, you know, set me what sure. sounded good. And and that was the sound and that, that's what I used. So I didn't even use any of my gear. I just used what was what was there because that, yeah, yeah. that seemed to be more fitting for that particular session. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, that, that was, um, you know, that, that was a great experience. Sure. Yeah. But that's, I think that's what it comes down to in those types of situations. Just your ability to do, okay, I'm working with this now, I'm working with that. Now, I read there um, when um, Jeff Beck was doing, and uh, he did a, a Hendrix tribute album, and he, he I think he, uh, I can't remember which song he played. It might have been Cross Town Traffic, I can't remember. But anyway, we turned up at the studio without any instruments or any amps at all and they were like well um what do you, everybody was expecting to bring him like you know vintage 
strat or something like that or some w- weird amp that, that someone constructed in the 60s we didn't bring anything and he was like and he was like okay well what do you want to do and he apparently just plugged into a very stock strat and a very stock uh, fender amp like nothing you know nothing retro uh, literally drapes the cord over and, 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 and was Jeff Beck you know um, and I get the feeling that you know when you go into these situations it's very much a case of playing to your strengths and playing exactly what's right for the song and and that sort of like composure to approach something like that like you said i didn't even use any of my you didn't feel the need to force your guitar guitar sound in there or a particular effect you just played what was right for the song and i, I it seems to me that every session player that i've heard of any note plays purely for the song you think about like the guys who play for jackson uh you know and, and done those you know what i think session guitars might be the, the biggest unsung heroes because they just they play some of the best stuff you know everybody remembers the the, the, the eddie played the solo in in in, in beta yeah. but they don't remember all the the the, 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 the lovely riff because he didn't play the well, riff did he steve lucas steve Luke. <laughs> yeah. there you go like i already found out recently to, to point that eddie did play the rhythm oh did he yeah and they had to redo it Okay. Steve Lucas had to come in and redo it because Eddie's rhythm was all over the shop. And so you know, and, and everybody remembers. No one remembers the solo per se, like you know. But the but the but the riff. Of course, everyone remembers that. Like you know, it was like I was watching a, a thing. Everyone with, remembers the solo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think everyone solo. remembers that a solo happened. I don't think you go. I don't. I, I don't think that's considered like this. I think you have to. Be a I'm sure I can guitarist. sing it. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going it, but I can sing it in my head. Well, I think you head. have to be a specific type of guitarist. I think you have to, to remember specific. that. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. What, I know what you're both saying. It says I'm stuck in. I'm. I'm, I'm on the fence here. Okay, <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> my, I know exactly. My, what, I can. I can sing the solo in my head right now. Yeah. But. But that not for the riff. reasons that yeah it's yeah it's it's, it's not the thought of this beautiful melody in, in so much it's, as it's easier for the public to remember a riff yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 but it was it's recently uh, I watched a thing with Steve Stevens and I didn't know he plays um, top he, gun. the Top Gun theme yeah, I didn't know he did everyone knows that I I, I was the only person I was I was well, no, no 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 the we uh, the, the, <laughs> knew he starts to is that is that Steve Stevens it's you don't oh, Holy Tim. shit, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start again, okay? I'm going to start again. But I didn't know. Tim, I mean, you I, can I edit wonder, that bit out. I wonder <laughs> how many people, there's a thing, when we put the comments up, and how many people act, honestly, if you're really honest, did you know his name? You might have known the guy's big hair and all that, but did you know it was Steve Stevens? I, be like, I would famous wonder. Famous as Billy Idol's guitarist. Yeah, I would. That's what he was most famous for. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how many people really knew. The point I'm saying is that Everyone. the session guitar player <laughs> is going to be the most unsung hero of, of all time because he's just he's meant to just sit in the background. Yeah, isn't do you know, it's funny, just to say, I need to interject here because I need to mention something before I, well, before we're all, I forget. We're talking guitar players before now. I forget now. Okay. You mentioned about Jeff Beck sounding like Jeff Beck. On, hmm. on whatever that's what he's the, that's what he does right and it's an interesting point there's on the liverpool metal scene there are a lot of players okay or a fair few players who've been taught by mr meller okay and i've i've been at gigs i've been playing at gigs i might have been on next or i might have already played or i might be just at the gig and i go that's a neil meller thing that we we would like to call this the meller effect <laughs> the, 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 right yeah. I, I, I was going yeah. you've been mellers <laughs> Do you know what? Genuinely, I think I was stood with you at one game. Okay. I went, "That's a Mella riff." That. Wow. Okay. That, that's how. Um, and I, that's I think the that's the circle complete. I think that is that is the circle complete because um, I've heard it from quite a few players actually. Wow. Um, little things that Neil does that I've I've watched him do have copped, for yeah. twenty years because that's how long I've known there you him. Go. Uh, the, 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 no, they, they've they've taken on as part of their playing because it's the way you teach. Well, that's high praise. Right? That's um, surely yeah. that's surely that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. That's I call them mellorisms. Mellorisms. <laughs> no, I like all the mellorisms. I do like the Mella effect, <laughs> but I do like mellorisms as well. Yeah. Listen, no, why, why we've got a little bit of time here? The only last thing because it, we don't want to be too deep about certain stuff. We do have some levity to things. Let's talk about working in a guitar shop because you both guys work. Tim, for those who don't know, works in a guitar shop. But obviously, Neil does too. Uh, now, how much is it the worst job in the world, and how much is it the best job in the world? Because my first thought is, okay, I would want to play, and I would work my way around every single guitar. I would, I would have to play that. But that's yeah, me. You haven't worked in a guitar shop, have you? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you get really, 
you get really picky with what you pick up. Really? You don't even just because yeah. it's just because it's there. I'm thinking. Well, it's it's the kid, it's the kid in the sweet shop, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. You get full of sweets quite easily. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if we are talking about sweets, but certainly, like you know, effects. You don't want to try. It just there's, like endless with, with guitars. I, I think you end up just going back to the same ones. Right. Well, you end up going back. I, I go, end up going back. To similar the same types ones. or models or, or what? Do you, when you say similar uh, ones, what do you mean? I, you almost I because I I, I, I I teach and work in a guitar shop, and there was one certain. It was an Ibanez, and I fucking loved that guitar. And I'd go, yeah, I haven't brought mine with me today. I'm going to teach with this today. Yeah. And then I came in like the week later. <laughs> And she was gone. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the <laughs> one that got away. <laughs> she was. She was. She yeah. Was gone. yeah uh, oh, and that, that, that's happened to me. Where you, you you see a guitar, you know, it's hanging up in the shop, you know, whether it's new or second hand, and uh, it becomes your favourite guitar, you know, in yeah. the shop. With that is the go-to one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know when you. You know when you should be uh, doing a bit of work. You know you're, you know you you demo in an amp or whatever it is. Sure. You know it's like oh pick up this guitar, and uh, there's, there's a, a, a silly video of me that uh, my, my friend Carl videoed, and it's uh, he's, he's titled it you know Guitar Wizard or something. It's on it's on YouTube, and this is going back probably about 15 years ago or possibly even 20 years ago now, but. Um, that there was an RG, uh, I can't remember the, the exact model number, but bloody hell, it was a great guitar. It was like a purple uh, sunburst kind of thing, and uh, it sounded great. You, and it, you, you can't see this obviously because this is this is radio, folks. But there was a moment then, just a little tiny moment, when Neil looked off into the distance, and for a moment he was with that guitar. And I and I personally am very throat. happy. I think I, I think I actually know the video. Um, <laughs> Carl, we will try and attach it to this. Carl from downstairs. He, yeah, he, Carl, yeah, Carl for the sure. Yeah, I, I, we'll I think find a way to attach that. the video. So you don't know what happened to that guitar. That was quite well, it was it was sold, but oh. it was one of them where you kind of go, oh, I should have bought that. Every time, I, off, yeah. Every time someone mentions that video, or you know, it's because it's, it's a daft video, and I, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't even, I, I completely forgot that Carl had uh, videoed that until. Uh, he uploaded it a few years ago and it was like oh my god <laughs> you know and it was me just just kind of titting around and you, you, you are very young isn't it i'm not quite young you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah yeah You're younger than us let's, let's yeah, talk yeah, let's yeah, talk yeah. The, let's talk guitar shop etiquette right and how and how one approaches a guitar shop now let's get all the elephants out the rooms get these done quickly and set to move on something new obviously this stairway to heaven type of thing we know all about that and smoke on the water but i am i assume that that's such a cliche now that people don't do that but what do people play in guitar shops it's now not, that drive i don't think it's no. stairway itself is people playing fucking stairway wrong all right okay so it's it's, it's playing it incorrectly <laughs> Well, if you, the thing is, is that we, we, you know, when we all start the guitar, we're all shit. You know, there's, yeah, there's yeah. no getting away from that fact. But don't spend hours <laughs> torturing the bloody staff <laughs> with your, you know, awful versions of, of songs. Now, you know, and I'm saying that as a guitar teacher, you know, sure. and as a, as I mentioned, you know, we, we all are pretty shit when we start out. But just remember that, you know, it's not a gig, you know. <laughs> Do people like uh, stand up and, and oh, well, give, it, give yeah, the yeah, beatings like? Yeah, you get oh. you get people. Well, you know, oh. sometimes oh, seriously, sometimes, sometimes you get you get you know someone who comes in and they've got the mates with them and it's a uh, oh, it's like a performance. Oh, now, it's, yeah. it's a gig now. Yeah, oh, okay, oh, it's a gig. You know, they're singing wow. away and they're they're bashing out the 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 three songs they know and <laughs> there's uh, there's the other day I was covering the whole day sure in the shop okay. And a, and, a, and a kid he rolled up on his BMX. He stopped out, all screeched to a halt outside, sure. looked in the window, locked his bike up, ran in to this. I mean, it's a it's a goddamn awful Axel Guitars. Okay. AXL. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah a, a Flying V. Okay. And it's. I don't know what that. I know what you're doing with Flying V, but I literally, can literally the worst guitar place. in the shop. And okay. he shot over to it. Okay. And the thing is, in. The, his his one volume was shout. All right, okay. So he's, his he's, one he's volume was shout. In the shop, yeah, okay. he, he's just he, it's just his normal speaking voice, but he's, he's shouting loud. Yeah. Right, okay. You've listened to too much metal for a start. <laughs> so here it's going. 
and then and then he he says can i get the guitar and i was like yeah yeah just uh, yeah take care of it and then he takes a strap off Oh, the nice. thing and starts to put a strap on and I was like <laughs> why is he doing what, that what are you doing there what are you doing there chief um, <laughs> you, you can sit down with that yeah you probably so he, when he doesn't he just stands up with it holding it okay so has know, he played anything yet you know, he's not played a thing okay, he's all not right. played a thing this is worse than someone playing shit right. he's just standing there with it with holding these... it not, not doing anything shouting because okay. he's listened to too much metal in headphones and he's deaf now okay um, and then he's going on um, who's your favourite screamer in a metal band? And I was oh, like, Oh dear! Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Oh dear! And, um, the, the, and it's 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 sometimes the the fucking weirdos, right? Because you know how many how, weirdos you get in, in yeah. In but the how, show. how am I am I chancing <laughs> face here by I'm, saying how I'm, weird does no it? No comments from Neil Miller here. <laughs> Neil, I'm not, I'm Neil, not getting uh, involved yeah. in this part of the conversation about. How, uh, how how weird can you get it? Oh, I'm not myself up saying that. How weird does, can you get? It's just a good. Oh, I don't but know. Did the guy who comes in for a set of nines and he gets sold a set of nine gauge strings where he goes nine and he goes up, uh, you know, yeah, for, for to, every to string, yeah, whatever, comes yeah. back in that day. What are you fucking doing? You've sold me this and they're all different. And he expected a set of just nine gauge strings. Oh, all the same. You're all the same. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the, the joke of. Uh, <laughs> but he was keeping the, the guy off. buying. Was the guy buying an, an, a, a lead for his electric guitar and wondering why there isn't a plug on the end of it. You know. Uh, so. <laughs> Do you know what? We should we should make that so they can plug straight into the mains. Uh, <laughs> that, again, a, a disclaimer here for anyone who's Neil is refusing to <laughs> endorse Coop's product of the, uh, the the lead plug. That's the last video will be tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with this. What? There's a video of that on YouTube. There's no there's no way someone saw that. There's really yeah, the no. It's a it's a joke. It's, it's, a, a, joke. it's an urban legend. All right. Yeah, the, the, thing, the set of nine thing, things, things is real. That, okay. That happened. Wow. That happened to a guy called Ronnie Brandon. Okay. So that, that has happened. Wow. And I'm, and someone came in, hey lad, me guitar's buzzing. So let, let's, and the guy goes, yeah, it's buzzing, it's <laughs> nice, isn't it? Let, let, let's give a little bit of yin to the yang. So that's, we've all seen people destroying a song. Has anybody ever come into your shop and played something and you've been like blown away? Like it's been a particularly, not in, I don't even necessarily mean technically impressive, but just an impressive thing that you've heard. You Wow, you know, that, that's that's yeah. that's you took a moment out there, like you know. There's um, there's a few players that spring to mind. You know, I can remember once this uh, flamenco guitarist came in, and uh, ah, it was amazing. You know, it, the whole shop, you know, just stopped and was like, puts an ear on the guy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, and it was it was just fantastic. You know, and this guy was a professional guitarist, professional flamenco player. And it was just otherworldly, you know. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not something you see every day, sure. you know. So, um, yeah, so, so that, that was. It's it, that's, that's oh, the true. That. That's the true talent of yeah. something as genius as uh, is, is, is brilliant is when it quietens a room because people just know it's yeah. just known universally known. That's very good, not known technically yeah. or whatever. It's just very, well, very it, good. It, it, it takes a lot to, to impress guitar players, and, mm. and to be honest, it takes a lot to impress people who work in guitar shops because they hear it all the time, Everything. and they hear a lot of great players as well as you know, not so good players. So uh, players, yeah. But uh, I think because it was something that was was a bit of a one-off, you know, mm. we'd all, you know, heard flamenco guitar players. Sure, but, sure. But, you know, seeing it in the shop, you know, mixed yeah. with, uh, you know, someone playing Enter Sandman. And sure. That, you know. It just was, jumps uh, out there. not to drown him out. A little, <laughs> yeah. a little window opens when something like that happens, yeah, yeah and, it, and it just cuts through. And that's, like just, I, don't, I don't like playing in guitar shops. Sure. For that reason alone, sure, actually. Sure. I always you know, feel I that do, whenever I know, go, it's... whenever I go, when I, I genuinely go in to see like a, a particular model has come out or whatever, and I went into one guitar shop, and I like I'm I'm probably the the, the, the equivalent of a tire kicker. I, I'm looking like I'm not. I don't really play anything if you know what I mean. I kind of like uh, I'm looking at the intonation and stuff like that because it used to repair and, and that. I'm more looking at that type of thing, what's under the hood, rather than sitting there and going how nice you know, or trying to play a whole set of licks. I'm looking at the, like the construction well, around that guy. I, I, I think if you're honest, I think, I think when, you, when you buy a guitar, especially when you're buying something over a certain price range, you've got to play it for a while. Yeah. You know, to actually Surely see that's why guitar shops, I mean, I know they're having, yeah. but some, there's some out there that are having a bad time, but ultimately, you know, if you're spending a lot of money on a guitar, you have to lay your hands on that. Surely well, you can't buy it on the internet. If you, if you pick up a guitar 
I think you know within the first few minutes whether you're likely to buy it or not because you can pick up a guitar and it just doesn't feel right. Just doesn't, you know, the neck's too big. You don't like the feel of the lacquer on the neck. You, you know, you play, even if it's an electric guitar and you play it unplugged, you know, you know, whether you like the sound of it or not. You know, and I'm talking about an unplugged electric guitar. Yeah, it just, just to, to, yeah, it rings or you go, oh, that yeah. sounds too thin. Now. All I can oh, think about is the Ibanez that, 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 that go away. Because you've just said that. That's all I can think about. Oh, and I think, commiseration. I think, I think if, if we could add a, 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 a musical dissolve, we would add one now <laughs> where we would just gaze lovingly off into the R.I.P. <laughs> the Ibanez that got away. Beautiful. I, I, that's, a, that's a great place to end that. That's, and, and we'll get some kind of picture of that. Tim that crying. Yeah, Tim <laughs> crying. Yeah. Thinking about the one that got I'll away. I'll see you one day. <laughs> I'll see you one day. Well, I've got a question for Neil, actually. Okay, yeah, no. It's, it's I've got time. a question for Neil. Yeah, it's very current, and it actually goes with the, the like T-shirt it. he's wearing at okay, the moment. Let's go. Oh, yeah. We it actually goes with the T-shirt he's wearing at the moment. Yeah. At the moment, you are um, lead and rhythm guitarist for... Phil Campbell. He is Phil yeah, Campbell. Yeah, you are Phil Campbell. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, or Fast Eddie, you know, whichever, whatever you... Whatever yeah, you there's something, there's something on the internet. internet. Yeah, yeah or, or, or more importantly... There's, there's something on the internet, favorite. actually, that... Um, that I, I, I saw Neil say and I fucking loved it. Um, when someone said, oh, Neil said, I'm fast Eddie. And someone said, yeah, he wasn't very fast though, was he? And your response was, you yeah, try and play his parts exactly though, because they're not easy. For, for those, not easy for to, those who are, are, not, are not aware, uh, Neil uh, plays uh, the guitar obviously in, uh, in a Motorhead uh, tribute band. Um, Called Stone Death Forever. But of course, you know, but of course, that's got to be that's got to be as tim intimidating as all hell playing in in because in, in, it's not just the, it's, it's not just a band loyal it's motor it's like oh, that, God, it's yeah, a yeah, way yeah, of yeah. life band right you know yeah. it's, it's um, well it's, the the thing is it you know when I was when I was younger uh, my uncle well, there's two uncles in particular um, who were into rock music and. Um, you know, I kind of got into rock music via them. They were like my two cool uncles sure. who were, you know, denim jackets and not patches on yeah. and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I can remember them showing me, you know, because they'd gone to lots of gigs and they had, they've got all the programs of all the gigs, sure, the ticket yeah. stubs and stuff like that. and things, yeah. yeah. And uh, they'd been to see Queen and stuff, you know. I can remember one of my uncles telling me, oh, you, you know, when I started getting into guitar, oh, you like guitar? You've got to check out Michael Schenke. He's one of the it's best guitar cool. players in the world, you know. Yeah. So, um, and of course, you know, uh, Lemmy and Motet were one of the bands that they were into and that got mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, I got into to music when I was younger and uh, my favourite band was, uh, I, well, still one of my favourite bands, to be honest, but it was Iron Maiden. Sure. But, you know, you start listening to the classic stuff, you know, Deep Purple's, Black Sabbath's, Led Zeppelin. And and one of these bands that, you know, just seemed like a lot of fun was uh, was Motorhead. And uh, the first time I ever saw Motorhead or heard Motorhead was on The Young Ones, you know, where they played the Ace of Spades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because, you know, when, when I was a kid, um, you know the the young ones was one of them that, I programs. Think that's the first time I saw them too. Yeah. Well, the, the the young ones was one of them programs that you know a lot of parents didn't really want their kids seeing because it was you know it's immature and it's sure, yeah. you know it, oh, it's a bad influence. It's, it's a bad yeah, influence. They yeah, always yeah, had yeah. a musical act like it'd be Madness or uh, I don't think I don't know if Susie and the Banshees did it, uh, but it was like it was always been kind of like a yeah, an edgy a, band, yeah. you know. Yeah, they did have a, a musical interlude. Yeah, you know? and I think they said something like Let, let's go to poor bus and like that, and then. And then and it was just it's like smash cut to Lemmy with the glasses on yeah, and it's just bumping it. The well. amazing thing yeah. about that footage though when he's playing the young ones is the camera guy has obviously has never even heard of this band or even seen mm. them or has any direction because it, when he's playing the solo yeah it cuts away from him it's like the, the, it, it, it goes to the other guitar watch it, it goes yeah. back, it, the guy's cut to the wrong thing each time and it's only recently watched it because it's like oh I just wanted to watch him seeing this solo as I remember like it just cuts off it, like. all right okay okay that's actually a really good question Neil does it piss you off when you see a band's video and it cuts to the solo and it's not actually the solo he's playing uh, I'm trying to think of uh a video that you 
there's there's a few that I've seen and, and it, well, uh, it, it, I think we've every, everyone's seen that thing that was doing the rounds on Facebook and stuff of uh, I think it was a gig in Spain or something and it's got the, you know it's an outdoor gig and, and someone's miming and then I it goes to the, the electric the, guitar the, solo the, the guys is, is yeah. I can't <laughs> the, guy, the guy's playing a like a you know a classical guitar you know but um, <laughs> and he's playing a ripping solo with this <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. it's quite comical but so so, so Motorhead that's like because it's not like I say it's more much other more than a band it's it's very much a way of life they've got to have the most rabid fans oh in yeah, the world. yeah like yeah. you know the, if you, the if motorhead you bangers yeah if you don't if you don't nail that you know what I mean you, you, you might as well not you might as well not get up because you're probably not coming off stage are you? Well, the, the, if you don't go into bomber and be and be rattling the money with that you're you're banging trouble aren't you as yeah, far as I can see you, yeah you, you've got to the, he's the, the, obviously Lemmy's not with us anymore as well so it's like Imagine being Lemmy. What the, the guy that the guy that's Lemmy? That's that's a weight. That does is. Does he become Lemmy? Does he? Oh yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, he jokes like um, when he's <laughs> when he's getting dressed and stuff. You know, he always jokes around. Uh, the first time, the first time I joined the band, you know, he said uh, we were in the dressing room and he, and he turned around to me and went, "Oh, you haven't seen the magic happen, have you?" And this is where he <laughs> this is where he Lemmy's up. <laughs> and it, it, you know, he's, he's joking when he's saying it, of course. You know, but, but he's. Uh, you know, all the lads in the band, good laugh, and uh, you know, and it's nice to be in a band like, like that where we're we're just playing music because we enjoy it. It's yeah, not because yeah, yeah. um, I'd actually taken uh, a bit of a break from playing live, really, and I've done a lot of focus on uh, on the teaching uh, because the, the gigs I was getting offered was were really not what I wanted to play. You know, so I was getting offered certain gigs where. Um, you know, it was just like kind of cover gigs or it was, uh, you know, wedding bands and stuff like that. And it just really wasn't appealing to me because I've done that kind of gig in the past and it, it can be fun for a while. And, and there's great, you know, musicians out there who do that kind of gig, but it just doesn't, it's not for me, you know, and I've got to be honest with myself and just, you know, I, I've got to do the things that I'm enjoying. Otherwise I'm going to hate what I'm doing yeah, and I'd yeah. never want to be in that position. Um, so when it got offered the gig, it was uh, you know it's like oh this this sounds like this sounds Could like fun. fun yeah yeah this fun, is yeah. fun playing Some music pretty massive gigs as well they're pretty big yeah gigs, you could yeah, festivals yeah. and stuff that you play well the, yeah the, the ne well the next gig we're playing at is uh, in two weeks uh, it's the Bulldog Bash yeah it's huge which is yeah, it's massive. huge yeah it's yeah. what fifteen thousand people like yeah. so is that all yeah, it's more hard, like, I don't know. The thing is, that's how many people are going to the, the festival. I don't know how many people are going to be playing. So. I, I'm telling you, you're probably going to yeah. play. You're telling me if you, uh, uh, any self-respecting uh, member of the biking team. I've, I've, I've worked. I've yeah. I've worked the Bulldog Bash, and I'm here to say it, it's just it's one of the, the great great. Although I, I did I did make a very very silly error, and um, unfortunately was pulled back at the brink when it would become a terminal error. Um, is I went. I, I'm a huge fan of like a huge fan of bikes anyway, but a huge fan of uh, Bonville bikes. Try and Bonville it's very very nice bike, and I was a big fan of. And one of the guys that was running the other stage had one, a beautiful one in sky blue from like the, the early '80s when they were really nice. And uh, and I was talking to him, and I got on with the house on fire. And at one point, I went to sit on the bike. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Can you believe that? Oh, I don't know what took over me. I'm, I'm, that's I, that, that's yeah. as bad as picking up someone's fortunately, guitar without asking. Fortunately, oh, that, that, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Fortunately, <laughs> at the last minute, I was dissuaded from that by by a, a, a friend of mine who was I, who had said, "You probably don't want to do that, Coop." And fortunately, he was he was very very good humoured about it. But I get the feeling. If I'd just gone and sat on that bike like an idiot, I would have maybe, I would maybe not have been around to tell a story. And he would have been right to do so as All well. All I can see you doing is getting on the bike and finding, getting not like an it. idiot, just no, maybe, maybe knocking the stand and then knocking like a concertina <laughs> yeah. dominoes. Yeah. Like every which way but loose. <laughs> But the point is this, is that, yeah, right the bulldog, the, yeah, the, the, the bulldog, <laughs> Bulldog Bash is, is, is one of the, and I'm telling you now, if there's 15,000 people going, any self-respecting uh, member of the bike facility will want to watch someone playing Motorhead songs, why the hell would they not, you know, it's like, that's, well, that's, the, that's, the, the good thing with the, this particular the band is that, we're, you know, the guys in the band, are sort of, we're doing something that we love, you know, this, by the way, this, this band, I should say, has been going for about seven years, you know, so, sure. um, the, the guitarist who was originally in the band uh, sadly developed uh, tendonitis. Oh dear. 
so he was struggling you know you can still play to an but extent but any length of time yeah, yeah, yeah. and the thing is with these you know with motorhead is that as soon as you start the gig you know yeah it's you, 100 miles an hour it's 100 miles an hour it. until until the end of the gig yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> and there's a lot of guitar, isn't there? There's, it, it, well, yeah, there's only the the, 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 the you cut. You the do a lot of work, the, like yeah. There's a lot of heavy lifting in that, like. Well, it's, it's not just that. It's, it's there's a lot of guitar work in terms of you know as soon as you there's only three of you in it. There's yeah, the drummer, the bass player, a lot player of sonic ground, aren't you? And, yeah. and yourself on, on guitar. So wow. And there's a lot of you know there's a lot of main riffs that you got to play and and, 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 that, yeah, and, and known riffs as well you've got to play them right because people have listened to these riffs for 30 40 years so if you know you're going into something if you're off slightly so oh, that's, yeah, gonna, that's yeah. gonna stand out massively well, isn't it, you know, you know the, the, occasionally you know the, there's a few blue, couple of clams dropped there yeah, like i'm sure that, that, happens, that can but, happen like but you, you you try and you know get that out of your playing so that you, sure. you you know you're doing the songs justice and um you know, sometimes other other factors can get involved, like uh, the sound on stage can be a bit yeah a bit tough and stuff like that. But you know, it doesn't matter what what the case is, we we always work through it and stuff like that. And so it, um, you know, so it's good fun. One we, of the things I did do the songs really well. I've seen some of the videos you're playing, and and I'm obviously being a huge Motorhead fan. I think you pretty much yeah you pretty much got those songs down I think and uh, all the members of the band seem to do exactly you know it's it's pretty on the money but it reminds me I went to see uh, 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 I've seen a hell of a lot of cover bands but I saw the cover band and it was a Queen cover band which is a tough that's a tough yeah, gig gotcha, yeah. uh, because you've got two or three high profile members in, in, in that like but beforehand there was a I took my nephew and I was like trying to mull around backstage and I was kind of talking him through you know this is where this goes this is where these guys and the guy was going to, uh, going setting up Brian May's guitar and uh, he was like you know and I was like oh that guy's setting that up he tunes that and he gets his sound and explaining it away and it's uh, quite a big you know big big fella bless him and uh, and I was like right so anyway the house lights go down I'm sort of saying oh, come to heart enjoy this like I was a really big Queen fan and uh, all the smoke's going up and it's like did a little and dun 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 all has a little mm. down and this guy walked past me to the same guy <laughs> and he's Brian May. I thought he was his tech and he's got the worst wig you've Brian May. I mean and I mean it's not even straight worst wig you've ever seen in your life. And I'm telling you now it's it, more it, like any adoption. He was <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> He was probably spot on guitar player, but I couldn't get past it when he struck it to one vision. I was just like, oh, just, do you know what I mean? When, when, when a band gets it, gets it wrong and it's, yeah, you know, I mean, that, you've got yeah, to look. actually really bother me if they got one vision wrong as well, because the, the live was Musically, phenomenal. musically it, was, um, it was very tight. Let's give them the props of these but it's like, you know, you've, it's like if, if, if the guy playing Lemmy didn't, didn't have that like you know didn't have the mic up to here the the, the hat the glasses the, the chops you know mm -hmm. he, if he didn't have that if he was only hot you just you couldn't no, you're, you're you playing could, at it then aren't you, you? yeah ex exactly you're not a tribute act any more than you're a cover band yeah, yeah, yeah. wow yeah you, there's, there's a lot of uh well it, it, to be honest for me with being the playing the guitar and it, it's quite good because i can draw from different elements um you know and i'm wanting to improve the show and stuff like that yeah, so yeah. Uh, what I mean by different elements is, in, you know, I've got three, you know, guitar players to choose from, you know. So, for example, for Ace of Spades, the yeah. um, the solo that I play is Phil Campbell's version of the solo, sure, yeah, rather than the original um, Fast Eddie solo. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so th there's certain, um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll give everyone a tip of the hat, basically. Yeah, know? yeah, that's a nice thing to do with a band that's that's, that's had many guitar players with very different styles. It's nice to do that. Like, it's nice to be technically to be able to do that. Like, well, it, yeah, it's, it's 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 a nice it's, touch that man actually. I like that. Yeah, rather than being cool, well, man. I'm 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 this era of them or that era. That's nice that because you know that's that that that's a fan. Well, actually, I should, I should say I'm saying three guitar players, but of course they had um, they had four. They had. Uh, Another perfect day. Uh, oh God! What the guy who was in Thin Lizzy lost uh, me. Uh, Brian Brian Robert no, Robbie Robertson. Oh, I can't remember. Brian Robertson. Uh, Brian Robertson. Yeah, yeah, Brian yeah, Robertson. Yeah, we got there yeah. at the end. <laughs> yeah, just a bit of a brain fart there. I should remember his name because the thing is, I actually, actually love that album. Yeah. Because his guitar playing was fantastic what on it. Player, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, one of my uh, favourite songs to play. 
is I got mine. Okay, it's and a fairly deep cut as well. Like you think about it, like yeah, the, the guitar solos in it. Oh my god, are amazing! Phenomenal. You know, well the thing the thing is for the because there's two solos in that, and um, the first solo off, I've pretty pretty much got on the money. You know, it sounds near enough what's on the, on record. the record. The second solo is where he's playing slide guitar. Okay. And I don't do that version. Sure. I so at, at that point, <laughs> I just kind of improvise in a similar style Yeah, just style a little bit him. more legato. And yeah, but, yeah. but I had this idea. I still need to... I haven't had time to work on it yet. But do like kind of a Jeff Beck scooped slide. You know, I don't know whether to do that or... Sure. Or whether that would be a little with bit, bar or yeah, with, with the maybe, tremor on. Maybe I'd, I'm but a, I don't, sure someone that, might get that if that's you did that. Actually, what I thought of straight away, you'll probably use the tremor on. Yeah, but it's, to make it's, it sound it's like not it's something you know. Maybe if it work if I was going to go west, you know, Alan <laughs> Murphy kind of thing. But uh, crack I'll probably I'll, I'll probably do it and try it out and see see, see if it works. works. But if uh, you know, if if I get a couple of uh, shaking heads, as if like. Yeah, Motorhead on. would not do that. <laughs> yeah. I oh, would uh, oh. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll just play it on my own, you know. Just so. to kind of bring things to an end here, the two questions that we're going to be asking everybody uh, is uh, two parts. So the first one is, what was your, your favourite show that you've actually been a part of, that you've played? Um, and what was the favorite, your favourite show that you've ever been to which is like a massive question when i think about it but yeah you know i mean what are initial thoughts on that your favorite show that you've ever worked you've been part of and then a favorite show that you've just been to see uh, uh well in terms of a show that I'm, I'm part of i'd probably say the, the, the one i'm currently in so you, you know the, the, the most tribute band um you know i'm sure there'll be uh lots of other uh, things I'll be part of in the future that that will be good. But at the moment, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. Now. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun, and, it's fun. and it's uh, you know I'm playing music that I grew up listening to, and you know um, I'm playing big festivals. And you're in Motorhead. Well, <laughs> in my dreams. In your dreams, I am in, in Motorhead. Motorhead. Close your eyes for that for that yeah, particular yeah. solo, and you're in Motorhead. <laughs> but but uh, then. The big question, yeah, the best show you've you, you've ever seen, best best gig, best gig you've ever seen, which is a massive question. I don't even know if I can answer that. I'm uh, thinking about mine now. And it's, I I don't I'm, think I can, but so I'll probably, it's uh, I'd probably say um, there's a few to be honest, but the one that really sticks in my head is um, going to see Malm uh, Engve Malmsteen. Sure. And um, I'd met him a few years earlier in Liverpool. I was there. <laughs> and you were there. I was yes. there. Yeah. I'd met him a few years earlier, I had a, a, like a guitar master class that he'd done in Liverpool, but I'd never seen him at an actual show. Play it. Pl well, yeah. he was playing at the master class, but he, he was um, playing to backing tracks. But the show that I'd seen him, you know, where the band was in, was in Manchester. And, um, you know, I got there really early, ran to the, the front of the sure. stage, hugging the barrier, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, it was amazing, you know. All the, the, there's these amazing solos that are, you know really inspired me to, to get into that kind of technical guitar, neoclassical type of thing, and and he's, he's playing them, you know, a couple of f foot fair. away in front of me, yeah. And uh, it was amazing. The the only drawback of that gig was I I was right next to the bass bins all night. <laughs> okay. So when I you know the gig ends and I walk out. And I realise I'm de I'm actually deaf. Sure. You know, but this is you know we've all I'm sure we've all had tinnitus at that gigs and yeah. stuff. But this was like everyone was whispering, and I've never it's been more scared now. in my. Because you thought because like, you, you thought you're hearing it. I'd yeah, gone. yeah. Well, the thing is, for three days my hearing was was really bad. Yeah, and you thought when and my it balance get? was going as well because because of equilibrium and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know. It was an amazing gig, but I just wish I'd brought earplugs. I think he'd, yeah. he'd wear earplugs at gigs. He, he, he'd yeah, have yeah, loved that, though, wouldn't he? Have man, Steve, if you said that, he said, I, can't Probably. I, was, I was deaf for three days. He he, I think he would have enjoyed but, that. Well, yeah, possibly, I think he would yeah. have enjoyed I've that. I've made Neil stone deaf. <laughs> <laughs>